So normally I don't do things like this because I usually just like to wait till midnight, but I'm in a scenario right now where I'm like way too busy tomorrow, so I can't review anything. Just saying, I'm gonna be gone the next week. So this is my last video before I go. Um, so I'm gonna be gone the next week. So I was thinking, okay, so I'll just react to Tyler's album tonight. And then I was like, oh shoot, there's a Ski Mask, a Doja, and a Hiatus Coyote album, and possibly an Isaiah Rashad album. I wanna listen to all those. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna react to this Tyler album early because I got a guy in Australia who sent it to me. So I have a link to this album, I have the full thing. It's not Spotify, I actually don't really know the streaming service, but I, I'm pretty sure this is the album. Um, I don't know if I'd call this a leaked version because it is out in Australia. I want to hear it early and I need to hear it early in order to get this video out. So I decided I'd get that link and I listen to it because I cannot wait to hear a new Tyler record. Um, I love this guy. He's one of my favorite artists of modern times. He's so consistent. Another reason why I really want to react to this is because of how much I love his past records. You can see I got the Flower Boy record down there. Um, I love this guy so much. And I just really want to see, like, I really just want to, like, uh, first of all, I want to hear what he's uh, coming with. But I just want to know, does he complete one of the greatest three album runs in hip-hop history, being Flower Boy, Igor, and is um, Call Me If You Get Lost the conclusion to this great trilogy of albums? I want to know, and I need to know. And I think Tyler's a great artist, so I, I just want to hear what he's offering here. Um, somebody's been, a lot of people are talking about how great, like, how, how, how they want the emotion to kind of go in this album, like how um, uh, Flower Boy, somebody worded it very well as like this, um, uh, just like this beast that has all these emotions, but it doesn't really know where to figure them out, so it kind of tramples over things. Then in Igor, it's a very more direct condensing of those themes. That's one interpretation I've heard of it. Another interpretation I've heard is that Igor is, I, I can't say Igor, apparently that's wrong. I did not know that. So I'm going to say, I'll try and say Igor for the rest of this video. Um, In Igor, it's like this unrivaled emotion and it's like, he can't contain it. It's his love for this other boy. However, on this one, what if it's like this girl and um, he loves this girl, but he's going to be more laid back about it and more calm about it. So um, there are some theories about the whole story of this album and how it ends. It's the really story album and everything. There's a couple of pretty big tracks here, a nine minute and an eight minute track. This is the, by far the biggest album I've ever reacted to. The only the other two I reacted to were The Off Season and King's Disease, both around 30 minutes. This is 52 minutes, so this is way longer. So um, I don't know if I really get, in, get any more introduction. I'm very excited to hear what Tyler's offering here. I'm gonna go in very open. I really liked uh, Lumberjack, I reacted to it. So I'm open to what he's gonna be bringing to the table. Tyler is one of my favorite rappers out right now, so let's hope. Also, just, just thank this, this guy Dropped a single last week, and he's dropping the album now. There's no delays, no, oh, here's the tease, and then the album comes later. He's finished with the album, and he's like, okay, now let's roll it out. Artists start doing this. Silk Sonic, Kendrick, okay, Kendrick didn't really, hasn't really teased it a ton. He just probably had unforeseen delays. I would even say, like, J. Cole with the off season. Um, there's other ones coming out, like, tra like Travis with Utopia. Drake with Certified Lover Boy that still hasn't come out. We've been waiting. What? I almost we'll be waiting. Well, probably by the time it's come out, we'll have had been waiting for a full year. This album season will have lasted an entire year. So, but but Tyler came out and he's like, "Hey, new album next week," and it's next week, and there it's it's here. I actually did it. So thank you, Tyler, for that. Just saying, I'm kind of tired right now. I just woke up from a nap. So, yeah. But let's get into this. Lumberjack was a great single, so I'm very hopeful to hear what he has to offer. Um, Let's go with Call Me If You Get Lost. Um, track list here, we have number one, Sir Body Liar. <laughs> Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, with DJ Drama on it. There's some really interesting features that I want to talk about it real quick. We got 42 Doug, um, NBA Young Boy, Ty Dolla Sign, Lil Wayne, um, uh, Brent Fayez, uh, Fanny Hughes. I don't actually know Fanny Hughes. Uh, Lil Uzi Vert and Pharrell is a song. That's interesting. Um, I'm excited to hear these features, um, except for 42 Doug, I like all these artists, so I'm interested to hear all them. The main takeaway I get from this, though, is just like, what's he doing here? Like, y'all remember the last album, there's no features. Igor was like 40, I, Igor was 40 minutes, no features. But, 
Oh, we'll just see what he has to offer. So we got Sir Body Layer with, uh, whatever, with DJ Drama. Let's go. Also, I has had to remove a ton of music because it won't let me upload it for copyright reasons. So enjoy. I'm gonna give an observation real quick. I noticed from like the first 40 seconds of this. Um, he's rapping pretty intensely, a lot more intensely I think than the past couple records really. Um, he's not doing the singing, he's not singing, it's not like Igor there. Um, it's, it's like intense rapping over a really soft beat and it sounds really nice actually, I like it quite a lot. You have a little jingle there, that's nice. I wonder if that's gonna be like at the end of every track. Um, <clears throat> track number one, it is interesting. I mean, I, I definitely liked it. Um, I'm really going into this with like this thought of like, I think I know, I'm like kind of going there like, okay, what it, what direct, I'm trying to figure out what direction he wants to go in. Because I absolutely know from Lumberjack and now this opening, he's going for this more, it's more grimy than the last record or two. But I'm like, is the whole thing gonna be like that? Are there gonna be more soft songs? I'm just really interested to hear what he's come with. I really liked that though, that had a very nice production to it. And I really like the Call Me If You Get Lost little jingle. And I really hope, I hope he puts it at the end of every track. I think that'd be cool if he did that. Like a, Watch the Throne thing, yeah. Okay, next track we got Corso. Um, no features on this one, so let's go. No drums yet, like not on the album yet, no drums. Oh! Oh, shit. Love this. Okay, I got a, a pilot, bro, he's going crazy. I did not expect, that first intro was like slow, but like dark. He's going crazy on this. I like this more than Lumberjack. This, this holy, this is great. <laughs> So DJ Drama also produces this. Hold up! Is he producing every track? I don't know. Oh, weird. Dude, there's... Okay, here's the thing I noticed. There's ego here. And I know I mentioned this on Lumberjack. There's ego in this record so far. And I love that. It's like, he's totally like, I love how he's like, um, I hope you're thinking of me while you're fucking because I'm perfect. Like, he's he's got this ego. He's like strutting around like he's the best. And I love it because I don't really get that energy from Igor ever. Like, they're, that's a very somber, kind of, like, distressed, upset album. This is more just like a, okay, screw you, I'm perfect. And I enjoyed it. That energy on this track, the fucking energy, man. Oh, dude, oh, that, that's, that's indication there. He's like, I don't like saying the word bitch, but it sounds cool here. I love that. Um, that, that bar where it's like, I, I'm, my heart broken, no, my emotions broken, but I'm rich, so I bought myself great oh my god that that turned my energy up that that makes me i'm just ready now for the rest of this that intro track was soft it was nice it was cool second track he just came in with energy that's what I, it was energy there the production sounded great dj drama producing it so far i guess i didn't he's not he doesn't have a call sign on lumberjack though so i don't know but now we got track number three lemonhead this is the one with 42 doug y'all see my xxl ranking i'm not crazy about doug i like him He's hit or miss for me. Um, so that means it could be great. I mean, okay, it's okay, it's Tyler. Why am I why am I questioning him? Um, I don't know, but there's a possibility in the back of my head that's like maybe Tyler will murder oh, 42. But I, I don't think Tyler would feature him on a track without knowing he's gonna be good or not. The next one after this I'm really excited for it's the NBA Young Boy Tie track. So we got now track number three, Lemonhead with uh 42 Doug. Let's go. Ooh, kind of like the rhythm of it. I like it. <laughs> Energy switch there. All right, how I feel about that one. Um, I like it. It's not incredible. Uh, I think I still think Corso is my favorite track here. But uh, 42 did good. 42. I mean, I was right. I shouldn't have doubted Tyler. 42 had a good flow. His I thought the auto tune worked well. I think he was. He didn't do anything outside of his reach. I feel like he kind of just did what he's good at, and then. Dipped. The beat is my favorite thing about this track. I think Tyler did pretty well. I don't think he murdered it like he did on Corso, but uh, or really Lumberjack for me too. But I really liked the um, I really liked the trumpets in the back. It had very good energy to it. I I I like it. It's a good track. I think currently my ranking my favorite's Corso. Second's Lumberjack. This would be third, and then fourth would be that intro. Um, so, so far, but so far he's great. There's nothing, nothing yet I don't really, really enjoy. So, we'll go with that. Um, track number four, we got West CNA. I did notice this, so you look at the runtime of these tracks, it's like very normal. Like, they're like two to three minutes, but then there's this nine minute monster, and then this eight minute monster. That's probably why it's so long. If you cut those two off, that's, um, what? Like, um, and it's almost ten minutes. That's, 
wow, it would be about a 30 minute album without those two. Okay, those two gotta be special. They gotta be something there, okay? Okay, um, track number four, we got What's Your Name. This is probably the most anticipated track on the album because everybody been, I, okay, I, I don't know if it's the most anticipated, it's just probably the most talked about because who, who expected Young Boy and Tyler? That's a combination I never expected. Um, but there's Ty Dolla Sign um, on the track too, so let's go with it. Track number four, What's Your Name. This one, I think, got a snippet. I didn't hear it. I didn't listen to, I didn't watch or listen to anything after Lumberjack. It wasn't a, I want to go and totally, oh, not knowing, it was just a, I don't, I didn't feel like it. So, track number four, um, what's your name? Let's go. This is a very nice energy. It's very peaceful. How's Young Boy gonna, I like it, but how's Young Boy gonna fit over this? Okay, so, so Tyler's in this nice smooth beat, and he's talking nice. He's like, hey, you can you know, dump your man, come with me, we're gonna go everywhere. You can lay all your feelings on me. He's being nice. He's really changing up the energy from Corso where he was just like, bitch, I'm better. Okay, okay, wait, 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 maybe, okay. If, I, I'm using the story I heard from Reddit of what this song might be. Maybe it's like, um, that intro, um, it's, it's like getting set up, and then like the second track, he's like, it's, it's, it's him still angry, and then he's building up his ego after the break, break in Igor. And then on the second track, I can't really tell you if it's this track or the second. I, I didn't listen enough to track three to figure out if there's a theme there. But with this track, he's talking about this girl. It's like a new girl. He's like falling in love with this new girl. Hmm. I like this. I feel like I'm listening to this a lot. This is a nice song. I just like it. No, he's, he's doing it. He's going good. I like it. I like it. Oh, I like that. It's just nice. And Ty is just doing some vocals in the back. He didn't have a hook. He's just vocals. Yeah, that was so. I was like, I like I mentioned, it was like more poppy. You know, he's like being really nice. Like, hey, what's your name? Can I get your number? He's being very nice. Yeah, and but yeah, Young Boy did pretty well. Um, same. It's kind of the same with the Forty Two Doug verse. I mean, I like Young Boy more than Forty Two Doug, but it's this kind of thing of like, you're good. You're really. You did really well. You handled it well. I just much preferred Tyler's performance here. Um, but you know, he, he he's not he's not doing bad so far. Um, so far this has been really nice. I really love this so far. Um. It's, it's just so interesting to me, the story is. Next we got track number, next we got Lumberjack, which I already have saved. I already heard it. I'm not, I already reacted. I'm not going to listen to it again. Really great track in my opinion. Um, I almost want to do it just like a, let's find out what the themes are here, but I know the track well enough. So we, next we got one, probably the track I'm most excited for here in terms of a feature. Well, okay, the Lil Uzi track is up there, um, but just uh, Hot Wind Blows, Tyler and Lil Wayne. This is a duo I already like. They already have proven they're great. Uh, Wayne has been a feature god this year. Dogs Out was incredible. Fucking amazing. Just a great performance along DMX. So I'm really hopeful for this one. I do want to mention, though, I'm a little disappointed there isn't a, a Griselda feature here. There were thoughts. I was like, what if Griselda's not? That'd be so cool. I would have loved to hear, like, Benny with Tyler. I, I hope that happens. And he went with Freddy, so I don't know why he didn't do it, but I don't know. I, th I think the Griselda guys would have been great on track, or at least, like, one of them. And oh, maybe, who knows, maybe Tyler's on God Don't Make Mistakes or something, I don't know. Or maybe he's on Tana Talk 4. But point is, though, is that um, I really would have liked to hear that, but, you know, Tyler and Wayne is definitely not a complaint. So let's go. Uh, this track is titled Hot Wind Blows. I've... I don't know if I've actually ever heard that terminology before, so let's go. Oh, I, that's, that, that's, okay, sorry, I, I actually was like, let's click the next song. That's Slumberjack. Okay, now let's play Hot One Blows. Ooh, flute. Instantly flute, I recognize that. The DJ drama ad-libs are the most annoying thing here, honestly. So it's like that trip he was talking about in the last track, or the second to last track. It's like that trip, you know? It's like he's talking about passports, he's talking about, you know, going on a trip, things are messy and shit. I like it, I'm getting that theme so far. What happened to the tone here? It's so much nicer now. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. That flow, man. Bro, why does this guy murder everything? <laughs> Wayne's a legend, man. Legend. Alright, so once again, Tyler's presenting us with this nice, soft kind of sound here. I like it. Wayne killed it. Wayne flat out killed it. Just great flow, great delivery. Um, Yeah, Wayne, obviously, he's Wayne. He kills everything, but like... I think he did really well for that. It's really, it was a weird beat for Wayne. He doesn't always go over production like that, but I think he did great. Not Dogs Out great, but great. Um, so yeah, I really like that track. Next we got um, uh, Masa. I've heard about this track. I haven't heard anything else about it, just I've seen it around. I'll be interested. 
by how saw this one. And okay, by the way, how I had to get this track list is the version I have on here on this website doesn't have the features listed. So I have like a screenshot from my phone that I sent to my computer because because yeah, I got a link to the Spotify and it just all of it's blacked out, but you can see the features and track names. Uh, this one has like um, so that's why I know the features on this one. Um, so by the bottom, I just noticed I'm listening to Pursuit of Happiness. When I was doing this, I didn't even notice that's the song I was listening to when I took these screenshots, but whatever. Here we go, Masa. Uh, this one's the longest track, so it's about almost four minutes, so we'll see how this one goes. Totally talking about some trip right now. That's what he's, he's talking about, this trip. This is very soft, I like it. Eyes open because I can't trust God either. Like that bar, good bar. Wow, okay then. Um, huh, <laughs> interesting. The thing I implied from this track, it's like at the beginning, he just slows, slowly, gets more intense, gets more angry, and at the end, it seems almost like a, like a industry complaint, you know, like a, like a, like he says something like, um, you're telling me I'm right, I'm putting my heart out over these beat breaks just for you to tell me they're not good over your lunch break. There seems to be a theme about him, his emotion in music, but just for someone to tell him it's not good, or I'm also like thinking maybe there's a theme about the whole Think about this album, or like the story this album's trying to tell. I do want to emphasize something that I don't always try and dive deep into albums on first listen. So I'm trying to go along with what he's trying to tell here. But in, when I get my longer review out in the, like a week or two, I'll definitely have a much more clear picture of what he's trying to tell here. So that's more how I see it so far. So um, next track, that was really good. Masa is one of my favorites so far. Next we got Run It Up with Tizo Touchdown. I've never heard a track with Tizo Touchdown before, so... Um, Let's hear how this sounds. Uh, let's go. Trumpets there. Why is he here, man? Why is DJ Drama always at living this? Wow, this sound got way softer and way quieter really fast. There it is. Yeah, his voice is way softer now. It's interesting. There's a very, there's a kind of celebratory sound to this track. I like the vocals. I like it. There's a very turned up, nice energy to that track. I quite liked it. Um, Mo I noticing that this album has really had an interesting like tonal war. Like the first track, he was intense rapping over a soft beat. Then he was intense rapping over a hard beat on the second track. Third track um, was kind of less hard, but it was still there. That energy is still the present. Um, then he went over the. Then he went totally soft, really nice. Then he went really hard again, and then on. Then then he went like. Then he, then he went like soft again. And he's been softer since. Like, the last few tracks have been, like, way more soft. Masa did have its emotion in it. But, like, it's interesting that Tony's going with here. And I'm, I'm very fascinated to see what he's going with here. All right. So, um, we just did a manif No, we just did Run It Up. Next, we got Manifesto, um, which seems to be around three minutes long. And then we got, uh, which, by the way, this one has Domo on it. And then we got uh, the big nine-minute track. So, hold up, someone's calling me. I'm gonna hang that up. Okay, um, let's go with this next track, which is Manifesto, um, featuring Domo. Let's go. It's <laughs> like the, <laughs> why did, this is such a great way <laughs> up. <laughs> oh my God. I like the choir singing in the back. It sounds really good, actually. They have a great chemistry, Tyler and Domo. They always sound really good together. So he actually is talking about racism here. Okay. That um, that set of bars there, where he's talking like, "Let's be, you know, together." Um, basically, that whole line of bars is like one of the biggest things on "To Pimp a Butterfly," just condensed down in a very simple way. I like it. So actually, he opened the track by basically saying, they want me to talk about these issues, suck my day. And then he talked about said issues. So I'm gonna adjust the light right now. My face looks whiter than cocaine. Um, it didn't, I didn't, that didn't really fix it, a little bit. Point is, is that the beginning of that track is like, <laughs> it was hilarious. And then he goes in and he's like, they're actually talking about these systemic issues. I like it, you know? I, I mean, I always, I, I always, like hearing artists talk about issues like this and racism is an issue that I think rappers really should discuss knowing the genre and the race that surrounds the genre it's and and the whole just racism is like part of the foundation of hip-hop it's part of the 
roots of hip hop from the very beginning and always has been. So I'm happy that, I'm always happy whenever rappers discuss it. And I think he, he, he discussed it very well here. He put things in very good terms, talked about it very well. Um, my, I, I really like Domo and uh, Tyler's chemistry. I think they work really well with each other. They have for years now. I think they work great with each other. Um, I, I, I like the way he talked about the themes and I think he talked about it in a very straightforward way. There's nothing complicated about this. He's just saying, hey, those are the issues at hand. This is how I see it. And I, it's good that he's doing that. He basically wrapped up to Pippa Butterfly. Not really, but he wrapped up a big theme into Pippa Butterfly. So yeah, that, that was nice. Okay, next we got the 10 minute track. Nine minute, 48 seconds in total. It is titled, uh, Sweet, I Thought You Wanted to Dance. I think that's what it's called because it cuts off. So I don't know. I think it's, I think, I thought you wanted to dance. So it's like a double track, right? That means uh, Wilshire is just long as hell. So I'm interested to hear what he's going to offer on this track. Uh, so far, I love this. So this is so good so far. So let's go. Nine minute forty eight seconds. Uh, it also has Brent Fayez on it. Um, singer I really like. I think he's great. I have not heard Fanny Hughes before, so we'll see how I like her. Um, so let's go, sweet. Uh, I thought you wanted to dance. So this is straight up R and B. Just it's R and B now. Brent is gonna fit great over this. I know it. Y'all watch my channel. Y'all know I love R and B. I love the soft, smooth, just singing over the instrumental. It's great in my opinion. Um, specifically this kind of instrumental. I don't know how to describe it though. I'm just gonna say R&B. I love R&B to death, so I really wanna hear what Brent's bringing here. I so recognize this though. I don't know if he, if I heard a snippet. I don't know, I just really recognize it. There he is, Brent. There he is. So I totally forgot while recording this video that Tyler and Brent already had the Gravity track together. And, and it just hit me that, that that collaboration actually exists. I don't know why I forgot about it. That's one of my favorite songs of the year. I love that song. I love this. I love the man, honestly. Okay, okay, okay. So now I can tell that's that's the first track. That's sweet. The next one is I Thought You Wanted to Dance. So, yeah, he's really going with this, like, love vibe here. No track so far has really been... There's a beginning one that's, like, about breakup. But, like, the rest of it so far has just been, like, really, like, love. I love you. You're so sweet. You're so great. I got a feeling that something's going to happen. I have a really interesting feeling that's going to be, like, the last half of the album. Everything falls apart or something. I don't know. Um, but I can tell there's definitely a theme of, like, love here. Um, so this first track, by the way, just thank you for dropping this Midsummer. This is great. I'm totally going to be listening to this, like, in the car, or just vibing out. It's a great track for that. Um, very interested to hear what he's going to bring in the last, like, five minutes of the song. So let's go. Oh, there's, like, reggae. Oh, so there's, like, they're having issues, I think. That's interesting. I still can't get over the fact that he put R&B, no reggae in this. I love it. Fanny Hughes' vocals are great on this. She sounds so good. So, I, there's something interesting about that track. It it feels like there's this kind of, like, it's, it's interesting to me what the themes of the sound are. So now I have this thought of, is the rest that's going to be downhill, their relationship falls apart? Or is the rest that's going to be perfect? Like, there's this thought I had that the first half was her cheating on her boyfriend with Tyler, and then this last half is, um... The boyfriend maybe and broken because we know there's some cheating going on we know that so and we know this also from like the videos so i'm really trying i'm just trying to figure out where he's going with this um i love that track though like i love that like the first half really nice r&b track with brent fayez who's so nice smooth the last half was like this reggae dance song that had a very good theme about like falling apart just relationships not working out it's so i, I also really thought uh uh, I, I got to check out more of uh, Fanny Hughes. She is great. Brent Fayez is also great. I wasn't blown away by him, but I liked him. Um, as a whole, this might be my favorite track so far. I really love this. Um, this was really interesting. All right, next we got Mama Talk, which is only about a minute long. So I might think it might be more of like an interlude than anything. So let's go. So there's a theme on that track about like, I don't know, just see, I, I just, it's just a video of his mom talking about beating up other kids. I don't know what to imply from that. I wonder if that'll have a big theme later. Um, yeah, I was initially thinking it's like a dedication to his mom, but I'm like very interested by how that will play in. Who knows? Um, point is, those is nice. It's nice little interlude. Okay, next we got Rise with Daisy World. Don't know who Daisy World is, being honest with y'all. So let's go. I really feel like there's a theme about this being the boyfriend talking to Tyler. I have a feeling. Okay, I'm noticing something. I'm noticing. I'll get to it soon. I'm noticing something. 
Okay. There's a thought I had during that track. Um, there's a possibility now I'm thinking like maybe this is Tyler's relationship falling apart because I noticed this. <clears throat> so this album has a progression to it without question. You get here, of course, in Lumberjack, there's that ego there. I'd even say the same about a little bit in Lemonhead. What's your name is kind of more lovey. But then eventually it totally kind of went off of this ego, kind of more love and then more. But there's themes like Masa about fame, a manifesto about racism. Um, run it up is a little more kind of ego. But like, then sweet, sweet, I thought you wanted to dance is kind of in the middle of the album. And it really seems like there's this thought of like, um, like their relationship falling apart there. And then it really, first there's a thought of me that's like, what if with Rise, it's like his ego, he has this really ego here and he's saying, I could do it better than him. I'm like, maybe things did fall apart in their relationship and he sees this other guy. But there's also the thought of me that's like, maybe Tyler got this girl to cheat on him and he's looking at it. But I'm really, I'm open to whatever this is. Um, we got four more tracks left. One is eight minutes. So next we got Blessed. Um, no features on this one. This is... This is the shortest track. It's like not even a minute long. So let's go. This probably is another interlude thing. Okay. I noticed it. Now I'm noticing another thing. He's so happy on this track. He's like, my life is great. Nothing's going wrong. So either things are really going downhill or we are going back and forth between these two characters. Because he says, I fell in love. So this is the words of a man who's in a good relationship. I do want to mention, I've been talking really about the themes lately. Rise was a great song. The beat was fantastic. Daisy World's a great, I love that song. Just want to mention that real quick. I really like the little instrumental in the back of this one. Um, but I want to mention that because I'm going to, I'm worried that with these next whole tracks, I'll get way too into like the themes of the album and I won't actually tell you guys how I see the tracks and the production and the rapping. So far, by the way, there hasn't been a single track I slightly dislike. I love everything so far. Like I'd say this, every track is great. So... Really, he's doing, he's doing so good right now. So next we got Juggernaut. This is the one that I'm really excited for. We got Lil Uzi Vert and Pharrell. I love Uzi to death. Pharrell's great. Let's hear what we got here. What did that, where did that come from? I've never heard Tyler rap like that. It sounds great though. I need a music video for this track. That's what I need. I need a music video for this track. That's what I need. Oh, uh, it's Pharrell, let's go. I'm willing to bet he produced it. It sounds like he produced it. Totally unexpected that he would just murder it. Just like go in full banger. Joyful as fuck, man. Just, that was fun as hell. It might not be my favorite song because it's definitely not like the most well written, you know? I, I think, I'm going to be honest, I think Sweet, I Thought You Wanted to Dance is my favorite song so far. I think that's my favorite. Um, Course was obviously fantastic, but that... Might not look as good compared to some of the other tracks. I think uh, Manifesto's up there and Masa's up there too. There's some great songs here, but Juggernaut, badass. Just a great banger here. Next we got Wilshire, which is another eight minute song. There's definitely a reason why it's eight minutes. Uh, let's go. Okay, so he's telling a story here. Very much a story track. That's why I'm really trying to pay attention here. But what I've picked up so far, um, him and this girl are good friends. They like each other. Um, and he, he just thinks she's so hot. And he's like, I don't even want to fuck. Your, your presence is just great. And then he decides, you know what, I'm gonna tell you my feelings. And she's like, he's like, hey, I feel this way about you. And then um, she's like, actually I feel the same, but I'm dating this other guy. And this it's it's Tyler's friend. Very much sounds like the theme that's been going throughout this whole album. Whatever this theme is about Tyler loving a girl and cheating, there is such a heavy theme in that. And I know for a fact, the story of this album has to do with that. So I'm very interested to hear where this story goes from here though. So now the story's evolved into like a, uh, how does it, it's like, they actually really like each other and they're like, oh, but he keeps looking and he's suspicious and he's like, you know, to ruin my friendship with him for you is worth it. And he's like, no, that's not good. He's not cool. So he's having these thoughts about it. I know for a fact, she's going to cheat. I just know that already. So like the situation's getting a little bad here. He's like, he, he's talking about how much he loves it. And he's like, this is such a good relationship, but it's wrong. He, you guys are dating. I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm in the wrong here. He has every right to be mad at me. That's really honest of him. Like other people, wow, that is some, that is some Paul. There's just all that, this is what happens when you live in a city like this. There's just all this dust flying everywhere from the trees. Anyway, um, he's telling this theme here about like, um, like he knows it's wrong, but he's like, I love you so much. That's so interesting. I, I'm so fascinated by the story this album's trying to tell. Um, 
Uh, mostly what I'm getting from this track is, I mean, the production side is great, the rapping is really good, but it, without question, you are meant to really listen to what he's talking about here. That's why this is here. So, yeah. I, I really like this so far, though. Um, I'm very interested by the story. Let's go. So, yeah, now now they've broken up. They're like, okay, we, we can't do this. We can't be friends. Um, it's wrong. It's messed up. We're hurting him. We gotta go. So now he's totally broken up. He's so sad. He's like, yeah, I thought you were the one. I thought you would complete me. No, you can't. Yeah, this is a, I mean, this is a situation I've literally been in before. I don't, I don't like to get in my personal life, but I've literally been in the exact spot Tyler's in. So I, I'm relating to this a little more than I hope to. So that's interesting. I said that way more awkwardly than I hoped to. More what I mean is that I did not go into this album expecting Tyler to have a track that literally narrated exactly what I was thinking during a specific relationship in my life. So I was a little uncomfortable listening to this song, but I was a little touched at the same time. So it's like, oh wow, he like takes the mature road here. It doesn't cheat. They don't break up. He's just like, you know what? I'm respecting your guys' relationship. Takes the mature road there. And um, he's like, but if she ever hurts you, I'll be there. So that's, he's like, and I also like the way he's like, we can't call it off in bad terms. We'll always be good friends and I'll always have your back. That is a nice way to go. I really like that actually. Wow, that was a great track. That was a great story about just like broken relationships and, you know, not being loyal to your partner. That's a really good theme to tackle there. I really like that, honestly. Um, that hit, that actually hit kind of good for me. I don't know why that, that hit me pretty deep. That might have hit me deeper than like most albums this year so far. We got one track left, but yeah, damn, that, that got me deep. I really like that, honestly. Honestly, love that track. Love that story. Just, he told it in such a great way, and he just put it in such great terms. And I liked the final line being, I thought I was bulletproof, but she proved me wrong. That's just a great line. Yeah, honestly. Um, and, oh, it just hit me. In Lumberjack, he says bulletproof. He says he's bulletproof. That's good. That's good. That's fucking good. So I think that track kind of tells the whole story of the album. Kind of, I think. It's like at the beginning, he's all this egotistical. He's with this girl. He likes this girl. He's talking about how much he loves her on all these tracks. And then things just start kind of not going as well. And then here he's like, um, just tells the whole story and lays it all out. So we got one track, Safari, let's go. All right, final track. I didn't have a ton of sand though, and I liked it. It was a kind of interesting outro. The, the um, I really liked the flows and such. That was great. But the whole album though, goddamn, goddamn, this was amazing honestly this was just so good i might have to call this my favorite album of 2021 i think i'm pretty confident i think this beats exodus i loved exodus it was so good i actually was honestly confident that would be the end of the year but my god the i was so underestimated how amazing this would be just the the production the themes but it was so much it was so much about the story that just really got me there's something i was so interesting about this relationship and him feeling so happy and then just it all falling apart him feeling like he was gonna make it and it just all falls apart for him there's something that's just so touching about the story honestly even as someone who's like really been through situations like this i just feel like he put it in such good perspective this was this was even great therapy for me just with those issues in my life even existing it's just this is a great album man this was amazing um, I don't even, I just, I just, I'm going to be listening to this all my next trip. Just, this is what I'm going to be listening to. Just the, so I'm going to be diving into the lyrics, the story, everything he wants to tell us. Truly, Tyler, the creator, you made what I might have to call a masterpiece. This was amazing. Call Me If You Get Lost is the best album I think I've heard in 2021. I might have to wait for my review to really know, but honestly, yeah, this was incredible. I highlight that it'll be going A+. That would be really weird. But I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll probably be giving this an A. Just saying. My review won't come out for a little bit, but I can tell you that that's most likely what I'll be rating this album. Uh, this was amazing. Uh, favorite tracks, I'd have to go with uh, Course. was great. What's Your Name was really enjoyable. Hot Wind Blows. Uh, Masa. Manifesto. Sweet. Juggernaut. And Wilshire. Those are my favorite tracks here. Um, Tyler the Creators, uh, Call Me If You Get Lost is amazing. Highly go, highly recommend you go check this one out. I'm hearing this. It comes out in four hours for everybody else. 
and I'm just sitting here vibing. I've already heard it. It's amazing though. I'll check this out when it drops again. So uh, you're you guys aren't seeing this until it drops though, because I'm not I'm not releasing this video before the drop. I'm waiting. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think on this new Tyler album? Do you love it? Do you hate it? I highly doubt you hate it, but um, let me know in the comment section below. Do you think this is the best in the trilogy so far? I have a hard time saying yes. I don't know if it beats the other two for me. The other two are phenomenal, so it's hard for me to say it beats them, but I'll give it some time. We'll see. Um, you can check my Twitter, though. I'll probably be posting more thoughts on this throughout the next couple hours or so. See you guys next time. Peace out. Bye.